on to our next dish, teriyaki chicken. This is probably the most sought after Japanese dish after say sushi and tempura. And it's available anywhere on earth. But I do something really, really different at Nihonbashi. We cook it on charcoal. Again, it took us so many years to discover the differences between a frying pan and charcoal. And the charcoal made it a huge difference. Textures and the juiciness of chicken. This is one whole chicken leg, deboned, and I have it on three metal skewers. I'm gonna place it on a net, skin side down, and the net has to be hot, otherwise it's gonna get stuck there, if the net is cold, I mean, it'll get stuck more. All this smoke that you're seeing is the fat under the skin, heating and dropping down. This teriyaki chicken gets used in our teriyaki maki, which is like a sushi roll, in teriyaki dong, which is with rice bowls, and as, as a dish on its own, uh, teriyaki chicken. And even our teriyaki fish gets done on charcoal. And not many restaurants in the world, especially in cities, have the luxury of cooking stuff on charcoal. Here, every piece is cooked individually. And that, together with the charcoal, makes a huge difference in what you have. I'm brushing teriyaki sauce. Again, this one is homemade. We don't buy anything in bottles. And it's about 15 years old again. This is one amazing teriyaki. I'm cutting it in the middle where the thigh and the drumstick joins. It's going to cut it into small pieces lengthwise of the muscle grain. So you're going to get little juicy chunks of teriyaki chicken. This is teriyaki chicken cooked on charcoal that you might not find in many places on earth. But here at Nihonbashi in Colombo, we do it in a way that it surpasses other people's expectations. Make sure you come and try this. The next dish is something very, very simple. It's chicken again grilled on charcoal. The only seasoning being salt for now. I have a piece of deboned chicken leg and I'm going to take the skin out. If you can see, this is all fat around the skin. And I'm just going to cut this. I'm following the lines of the chicken bones, so I get little, eventually juicy little chunkets of chicken. I took the skin off the chicken, which is very unlike me, and I trimmed the fat, which I normally throw. So this time I'm going to take the trimmings of fat, chicken skin, I'm going to put it into the charcoal. I'm even going to take a little bit of chicken tail, I have four here. So that goes inside the charcoal. And I'm going to cook this chicken right above it. And this plume of smoke is going to cook the chicken that we cut beautifully. I put some salt in here, I'm sprinkling little by little because I need to keep on moving the chicken over and over. Dishes like this, really, really special to dedicated yakitori restaurants. And out here in Colombo, we are probably one of the few restaurants around the world that would do fun stuff like this. Sprinkle some more salt. I'm just gonna let it coat layers and layers of smoke that's emanating from down below. Ooh, this is hot. So next time you buy chicken and you're not eating the skin, you've got another use for it. These charcoal grills are made for yakitori, hence the rectangular shape and a three inch gap. You can buy any kind of grill and use um, hardwood charcoal from our timber corporation. And that's all you need to do this. If you don't have a barbecue grill or you don't want to spend money on it, half a barrel, an old clay pot which has a hole in the middle and you have no use for it, that can be your a uh, vessel to have charcoal and just put a small piece of net and you're, you're set. For me, naturality of food, of stuff like this, is far more beautiful than the triangles and the circles and the ovals that you'd find in many fusion restaurants. At Nihonbash, I, I serve a little bit of yuzu kosho, which is a, a paste made out of the yuzu fruit, the skin and some pepper. But this one would also work with just zest of lime 
and I think it would work with something as simple as karapincha sambal, where you take the young leaves of karapincha, maybe even um, the minji sambal thing. It will be a really, really nice appetizer to start and you can make it at home, it's really easy stuff. This is the prawn dish I was talking about, that yakisori restaurant owner in Tokyo, that I grill prawns. Now this is Sri Lankan prawn, and I'm just going to sprinkle some salt, and I'm going to put loads of it on the top of the face, and at the tail. So when you cook it, it becomes this beautiful crusty part. Okay. Shioyaki, salt grilled, is one of the most simplest forms of cooking in Japan and it's done to really, really expensive and luxurious fish and meats. I have been really skeptical about serving this dish to Sri Lankan guests because it's so simple, but the salt brings out the sweetness from any kind of seafood. And it's an amazing, amazing uh, taste of the seafood and not the other spices and its sauces. get this dish right, the seafood has to be really fresh and good. All you have to do is just to take the hard shell of the prawn out. From here, all the way down here, you can eat the whole thing. Make sure you eat this right off the grill, maybe a, couple, a minute after it cools down a bit so you can touch it with your own hands. If you keep this out too long, it's going to get really leathery and hard and it's not going to be pleasant. So make sure you eat this fast. Today I'm going to continue with prawns. Prawns are available anywhere, but make sure you get fresh ones. If you find a black joint, the joint becoming black uh, right below the head and the beginning of the tail, don't bite. If you see big splotches of a crusty white thing happening on the cheeks of the prawns, they're all freezer burns. So that means they were frozen in a non-proper manner and they're just throwing it and selling it out to you. So get some really good prawns. This is very simple, sprinkle some salt and some olive oil. Chopped garlic and loads of freshly ground black pepper. My hands will mix all this up. If you're going to do this on a frying pan, which I don't recommend. Maybe you can take the shells out, but still put it on a skewer before you cook it. I'm going to use two skewers so that it's easy to flip. If you put one, thing's going to rotate like a propeller. So one, maybe an inch away from the tail, and another one right under the head. The next prawn in the opposite direction. So you get head, tail, head, then tail. going to dab a little bit of garlic that's on there. I can actually see through the prawns. It's like so translucent, so fresh. You can see the orangeness from underneath. The oil that's dripping into charcoal is going to give up to flames. When you cook on charcoal, you're not cooking with flames, you're cooking with the amber being really, really hot. So make sure if you, you move it out, out of the flames, if it starts flaming. When you're taking out the skewers, twist them and then pull it out. Don't try to yank them off because it's going to be stuck in there and you'll damage everything that you cooked so beautifully. Something really unique, it's very simple, easy to do. When you're eating it, you can eat it with the shell or you can deshell it. You can also make sandwiches out of this. If you have leftovers from, say, one night big party or something, clean it, deshell it, put it in the fridge, and next morning you can make a prawn salad out of it. So try this at home and let us know what you think about this dish and if it comes out right. If you have any questions as to what would go with this kind of dish, send us a mail or a SMS. I'll be more than happy to reply. See you next week.
I hope you enjoyed the program, found it fun and creative. I want to know what you think. Let us know on our website or Facebook page or by SMS and tell us what you feel about it. Whether you tried our menus and one winner every week will be chosen to come and join me at my restaurant for dinner. And I hope it will be you. We never cook at home, do you? The next time you come to the home party, what do you say? Mama, come to me. The next time you come to the home party, come and try our teriyaki chicken. The envy of many, many cities that they don't eat. You need to try what I make, and if you like, then at the end, The next dish is something very simple. It's out of asparagus and bacon. I just need a few spears of asparagus. I'm just going to use three for now. I'm not going to even clean the asparagus because I'm going to leave the eating part of this section. I'm going to wrap this up in aluminum foil after we cook it so that no one will eat it and it's easy to eat. I'm going to take a strip of bacon, first spear, separate them and roll it. When you're rolling it, make sure you roll it at an angle. And where you're going to finish, you can come straight. And use a toothpick to hold it. One more. I'm not going to use any oil on this dish because there's enough fat on the bacon for it to melt out and not, uh, not make the food stick to it. And these pans are great. These are Tefal pans and I got them from Singer. I cut a few pieces of foil and I'm going to wrap the ends of it after it's cooked so that it will be your holding part and you wouldn't get your fingers dirty. So these are great barbecue food and grounded it will taste much, much better if you use charcoal. But today we are indoors and I thought this is an interesting dish to show you. This kind of dishes are predominantly available at yakitori dedicated restaurants where the charcoal is the key ingredient. And something like it's so simple but it's not easily found in home cooking. At my restaurant we make this but I, instead of using bacon I use uh, pork belly. We slice it really thin and since it has no salt like bacon we salt it and then we grill it on charcoal. It's an amazing flavor. And this should be done when you feel the whole asparagus stick bending slightly. We are done. It takes about six minutes to cook on this, but charcoal maybe about three. I'm going to take the toothpicks out. And I'm going to wrap the foil. and a twist of black pepper. And that's it. This is something you can do really easy at your parties at home. You can keep it all prepared and then just keep on frying them in a frying pan when your guests arrive or when you're about to have this. Or barbecue. We're in the midway of our TV series and all this time we've traveled and we've shot in Japan and in Sri Lanka. It's been a lot of fun and I hope you've been having fun too. This episode I showed you vegetable markets in Japan and in Sri Lanka and I think the bottom line is let the ingredients inspire you. Don't let recipes and stuff like that. Just see what's out there and cook for the fun of it and that way you'll make some really really great stuff. So I'll see you next week again. You never cook at home, do you? The next time you come to Nihambas, what do you say? Mama, come to me. The next time you come to Nihambas, come and try our teriyaki chicken. It's the envy of many, many cities that they don't eat. You need to try what I make, and if you like, then let me make a bagiru.